So two buckets, straight across, way too aerobic, need to increase power, and a die, a quick death, way too powerful, not aerobic enough. Well, based upon neuroendocrine function, we can assume that based upon just one hormone called testosterone, men will have relatively more power in a window of intense activity, more absolute power, okay? If we assume that's the case, and we do know that mixed modal for sport and 4x30-30 is not completely different, but really different to 4x30-30 for general population, then allows us to formulate a plan for what happens in the difference between males and females, and then how do you essentially organize a plan prior to competition or just based upon their essence. We can assume that for um, taking an ideal of a 4x30-30, in order to do a 4x30-30 and to get some great uh, success from it, the person has to have excellent, not okay, excellent technique on the row. Get other people to make sure that you are correct in what you're thinking, because a lot of people think that their clients have excellent row technique, not a lot, but I see it, actually I do think it a lot. They're like, that's excellent row technique. And then they do the 4x30-30 and it's not excellent row technique. So if you don't have great technique, you're gonna get false scores, okay? So they have to have great technique. Secondly, they have to have absolute strength that's high enough. So I'm gonna make an assumption that we're talking about males or females and they have excellent technique and they are strong enough. And the reason why strength is important, relatively and absolutely, is that you will not get any indications of their anaerobic versus their aerobic system if they're not strong enough to try to produce power. I'll give you an example. You may get a weaker individual with low training age score you know, the same meters across all four sets. And you may say, which is the truth based upon the numbers, they're super aerobic, even under the context of great technique. But what you're forgetting to see is that you're not getting a reflection of the aerobic versus anaerobic system because they're not actually expressing anaerobic in essence. Why? Because they're not strong enough. So it's got to be excellent technique and they got to be strong enough. In that case, when you see the 4x3030, there is ideals in mixed modal that actually should be quite similar. And the reason why we don't change it between male and female in the mixed modal is because the sport requires a specific function. So I'm not saying you won't see different scores in a 4x3030 for mixed modal for male and females or the differences between the two sexes. It's just that we, it doesn't really matter. Why? Because the sport dictates what you need to have for aerobic and anaerobic ability. We use percentages based upon what their top 30 second is as 100. So if their top 30 second first score, you have to assume they went all out guns a blazing to get that 30 seconds with excellent technique and proper strength, okay? And not being tired when they first do the test. So it has to be controlled as well. That score is considered 100% max. The next one should be 95%. That means the next 30 second score, it's not gonna be the same as the first one. If they've truly expressed in the first 30 seconds, the third score should be 92% of the first score, and the fourth score should be 90% of the first score. 100, 95, 92, 90. This is the balance of the anaerobic aerobic score that they should have, because we've seen it so often, based upon that, that excellent balance of aerobic and anaerobic capabilities. If you test this person, if they score across the board, they need to keep their, you need to keep trying to raise their absolute strength and power potential, okay? And if they score on a really descending, hard descending line, right? So they were really powerful and then they shit the bed, you need to improve their aerobic ability, okay? I'm only putting them into two silos. Those are not the only buckets, but those are the only two I can, I can give you based upon time. So you wanna make sure that you're continuing to test this every six to eight weeks to see how the training reflects on the changes in those, okay? So two buckets, straight across, way too aerobic, need to increase power, and a die of quick death, way too powerful, not aerobic enough. And what are things that are most beneficial prior to the competitive scenario is actually the best repeatability. So you actually don't necessarily want to have the perfect curve that you would see of 195, 92, 90. You may want to see a, a 99, meaning it's less than what their pre previous potential was, and that curve starting to start to flatten out. Because that means that they're having still quite good power, but they have really good repeatability of power. Because a testing scenario of three events on Friday, two events on Saturday, and three events on Sunday is essentially repeatability of power. So how do you extract that down to one unit of information that could drive a lot of information as an anchor to set you up for success for that? You have to test way out there where they sit on those simple 30-30 times row tests.